Good morning, it's Monday, and that has come to mean that I am starting a new vlog, which is... I didn't realise that would be a thing that would happen this year, I thought it would be just themed vlogs, but then it became like a weekly vlog thing, and then this week it's going to be a mixture of the two, because this is something I planned to do back in January as like a birthday present to my mum, and then I just kept putting it off, I just kept putting it off because my mum has very, very specific reading tastes. But there are three books that she is constantly trying to get me to read. And I'm going to go through them with you and then I'm going to try and read them this week because I don't know if I can trust my mum's taste. She used to buy me books when I was younger. She was very kind of cover driven when it came to buying books and she would like read the blurb and stuff like that but she wouldn't necessarily go into as much depth with the recommendation as I do now because she's not a bookseller, she's just a reader and she's always really enjoyed reading. She's always encouraged us to read. But where I like high fantasy and Tolkien and dragons and shit like that, she doesn't like that. But as I said, there are three books in particular that she is constantly trying to get me to read. The first one is Flowers in the Attic. Now, this was the first book I ever picked up based on the recommendation from my mum. It was one of her favourite books as a kid, which is terrifying because this is a modern gothic novel about a family of four children who are basically locked in the attic and just abandoned by their family and they start creating their own family of the four of them and eventually they escape the attic. Now I have read this before and it is wild. I remember as a kid thinking like what the fuck is this and then proceeded to read the next two books where the eldest daughter Kathy escapes and basically becomes this really famous ballerina and then bec it becomes very black swan and it's just it's so wild the whole series is so wild but the main plot point is incest who recommends that to their daughter i don't know my mother apparently i'm just reading the first one um i bought this initially for lamentable library this is one of our lamentable library picks because we've both just been so busy i mean we did reorganize having some live shows and they still haven't happened because we're just so super busy hopefully next year we can get back on track with it fingers crossed because i love some gothic fiction I just don't know if I love this gothic fiction, so we're giving it another go. Um, and then another author, more specifically than a book, is um, Faye Weldon. Now, Faye Weldon was a lecturer of mine, and my mum was not keen on me quitting my pretty lucrative career of being a teacher, in that it had a salary, becoming a writer instead. She was not a fan of that idea, um, and she hadn't heard of any of my lecturers right up until second year, and like she just generally wasn't keen on the idea in general. But when I told her that Faye Weldon really liked my writing, it was one of my lecturers, she got really excited. <laughs> like, really excited. This is the book that Faye Weldon dedicated to my mum. So that's why I picked this one, because this is the one that... And obviously it helped that it came up on TBR Stacks as well for a TBR vet slash classic. So this is one where I'm really excited to just kind of experience the writing style, because Faye Weldon was so complimentary of my writing, I want to really like this book. But I've never read anything by her before. This is really exciting and an author that my mum endorses. And then finally a book that I had always promised my mum I would never read because I had absolutely no interest in the book or the author and that is Chocolat by Joanne Harris. This is my mum's favourite book of all time, of all time. And when I saw that it was like £1.50 in a charity shop I thought well that's the third book for this vlog, sorted, job done, let's do this vlog. And this is about a woman who opens up a chocolate shop over the road from the church. So after people go and talk about their sins and do all their penance, etc., they then go over to the chocolate shop and gossip and buy chocolate and enjoy that decadence. It's not particularly long. Like none of these books are particularly long. They're all barely over 300 pages. Um, so there's no reason why I shouldn't get these done. It works out about 50 pages each a day to get them finished. So that's kind of my plan for this week. I'm going to be editing my Middle Earthathon vlog today. I also need to shower, I also need to get some work done. So I'm gonna go and do that and then I will catch up with you once I have started each of these books because I'd like to be able to give you my first impressions of all three. Am I going to tell my mum I'm doing this vlog? Probably not, because I don't know if this introduction was particularly a glowing endorsement of my mum. I love her very much, but I, I question her taste in books and now I'm literally putting them to the test. But yeah, we'll, we'll, um, hmm. uh, just, they're an interesting mix, aren't they? They're an interesting mix. They're not what I would choose to read, except I have chosen to read them 
for this vlog so yeah enough preamble i'm just putting it off because i don't want to do this even though i said i would and i know that i need to get it done because this is three tbr vets so could be three new books on my shelf by the end of this week how cool would that be um yeah i'm gonna go read and then sh and then work i'm gonna go work then shower then read yes that's order <laughs> Tuesday. Um, so I read about 20 pages of Flowers in the Attic yesterday. That was the one that I started with. Did not read my 50 pages of all of the books. Barely, barely managed my 10 pages. Didn't read a lot of much else, but I did manage to get quite a bit of work done. So that's, that's something. I am filming the Gothtober announcement today and I'm really fucking nervous about it. And I woke up nice and early this morning because Olivia and I from Olivia's Catastrophe like to write at least once a week, um, first thing in the morning and we never actually get a lot of writing done it's mainly just a gossip sesh but i like it anyway that's fine um so i'm wearing a skull top for gothoba but i've got a meeting first so it's a meeting with my mum she has got a business i've got a business i'm helping her but i mainly use it to do my makeup and i'm really nervous and i was talking to olivia and i was like was i this stressed last year like i don't remember being this stressed last year and she was like yeah you were <laughs> yes you were you were this stressed last year hannah that is your go-to demeanor so um i'm really nervous that people won't like it because people keep telling me that it's gonna be bigger and better than it was last year and i'm like but what if it all goes horribly wrong what if it's terrible what if it's the worst what if no one enjoys it what if nothing grows from it what if what if people hate me like i don't know it's so anxiety is so stupid because you know it's not rational you know it's not like that's not the case people enjoy it will regard like if i made one instagram post for gothtober with some gothic prompts people would enjoy it i haven't i've made a game and loads of other cool stuff um i can say that because by the time this vlog goes up you will have seen it you will have seen my announcement video because i will need to film it and edit it this week but i've done the introduction and every time I think about the introduction, my chest hurts. And it's like, it's it's fear. But I don't know if it's actually because the intro is scary or if it's just that I'm like shitting a brick. Um, but yeah, like I said, I've got a meeting in about 10 minutes with my mum and then I'm going to film. So the next time I wrap up, I'll actually have stuff on my face and I'll probably look quite nice. I'll look very different. Um, but um, I know that Danny is going out with her mum in a bit. Lizzie's already gone to work, so I will have the whole house to myself to freak out alone. So that'll be nice.
So I've had some mail and I just want to talk about the sheer amount of sellotape on the back of this. Um, I know exactly what this is because it's directed to Waypoint and there's only one person who would send Waypoint stuff to this address because I told them that it was this address because it's not the official Waypoint address. I don't need you guys knowing where I live unless I've actually like let you know where I live. There is no give to the cellophane whatsoever and I'm worried I'm going to burn stuff on sec. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. So we have, in a very cute little bag, some bookmarks and book plates from Amy McCaw, who is the author of Mina and the Undead and the most recent in that series, Mina and the Slayers. So she has very kindly signed some book plates for me to add to the books that I'm selling via Waypoint. And she's included some bookmarks, which I really, I just love the colour. Royal purple is such an underrated colour honestly and then she has sent me a little postcard that just says um to hannah thank you for coming to my launch and for your support and you know what amy anytime anytime so i'm gonna go and put these with the rest of my waypoint stock because i'm hoping there will be a parcel being delivered today which will have my mina copies in it It is five minutes after that clip that I've just put in that I will put in because I've recorded it now. Five minutes. This is what British weather means. This is what it means. Complete inconsistency. What is this? What is this? This glorious fucking sunshine. It's hot in here now. Ridiculous. Anyway, I've had some parcels arrive. So I'm going to get myself a chai latte and then I'm going to talk you through what's just arrived because I think you'll be excited. Okay, so I have my spooky chai, which I'm I'm obsessed with chai at the moment. I've never been this obsessed with a hot drink since I discovered tea at the age of three. But honestly, and like the the spooky, I'm here for it. I'm so here for Halloween, and like my family does not really celebrate Halloween. They don't decorate. They don't do anything. So now I'm in my own place, and I get to have like my gothic vibes shelf, and just I'm just living my gothic life, and I'm here for it. But that's not. That's not why you're watching this bit. One sec. I have just had two massive parcels arrive from Gardeners. Now, Gardeners is my distributor. If you didn't know, I don't know how you wouldn't know. I own a bookshop and it's an online bookshop. And basically in that bookshop, I only sell books that I'm either excited for or have read and enjoyed. I don't like selling books on problematic authors. I like endorsing authors of colour. I like endorsing indie authors and I like reading good books. I like being able to recommend books that are actually enjoyable, not just like book a prize winners, basically. Um, I've just noticed the absolute state of that. So that's fun. Um, but basically that, that would just be where they put too many books in this box. It, it shouldn't it shouldn't actually have affected any of the books, but we'll see. But basically I like ordering in new stock and I've got quite a few pre-orders that are coming in. So I thought I would go through basically what has just arrived. Um, so that I can show you and I will tell you if these books have been ordered by someone uh, because if they have it basically means that I get to pack them later today or if they're just in for stock and what have you but all of these books I can get in so if you see anything you like like drop me a message because I can get these in for you and it means you're not giving your money to Amazon and I can still deliver and I know Waterstones are really struggling because they've just had <laughs> looking at me being smug over Waterstones um, Waterstones are really struggling with their warehouse at the moment which means loads of their pre-orders just aren't getting to people on time or at all which is annoying because even i've ordered some stuff from waterstones because i love their like exclusive editions and stuff and i can't get those in but i can get other hardbacks and stuff in so hit me up for your pre-orders is what i'm saying so box one i'm looking there doesn't seem to be any damage so that's a good start i got the holloway girls because it's got gothic vibes on it. And I spotted this the other day and just thought that just sounded like a bit of me. This is about a bunch of girls who, when you're kissed by a Holloway girl, it gives you good luck, except this one girl kisses a boy that gives him bad luck that almost kills him. So that just, that just sounds so intriguing. Yeah, that one's okay. I thought that was damaged for a sec. It's not. Then we have Spooky, The Hideaway. This one is a book that has been ordered in. So I don't know much about this. I just know that it has graves on the front and that looks really spooky, so for that and then the one that i mentioned earlier in this very vlog we have 
we have Mira and the Slayers. We have Mira and the Slayers. Um, I have ordered a few of those, so I'm just gonna like get those out. But basically, I'm gonna go and put the. Um... I literally got them earlier. What are they called? Book plates. Book plates and bookmarks. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm gonna put those in those books in a minute, and then, you know, keep a copy for myself because I really want to read it. And I didn't get an arc, so. That's, that is definitely a, a hint. Publishers, send me arcs, please. I then got Birds of Paradise, which was for someone who ordered it specifically. Um, they really enjoyed another book by this author, so they were excited to get another to get another one of that. As previously mentioned, more Mina. I also got The Balloon Thief. This was an order. I've not read this, but I've heard really good things. It looks to have really interesting mythology in it. I don't know much about it, it just looked great. And then this one I got in again because I'm just interested in it for Gothoba. Five Girls Lied, Five Girls Died, The Cheerleaders which again just sounds like a really interesting YA. There are no more cheerleaders in the town of Sunnybrook, which immediately gives me Sunnydale vibes and I'm hoping that's the point. Um, not since five girls on the squad died in one terrible summer five years ago. Monica's sister Jennifer was the last to die and Monica is sure there's more to her sister's death than anyone will admit. But whatever happened that summer isn't over. And as secrets emerge and lies start to unravel, Monica finds herself in the center of it all. Now she's going to get answers whether she wants them or not. And I just, I'm just, I'm here for it. I'm here for murderous cheerleaders. That just sounds great. Cherry Robbers, you'll have seen quite a lot on my channel because I'm really excited for it. Someone's ordered a copy of that. We then have this really cute middle grade that is called um, The Girl Who Talked to Trees. It's beautifully illustrated, like really, really beautifully illustrated. Um, and it just, it's just really cute. It's really pretty. And I really like, and there's foxes and shit in it. We love a fox. Um, and just the, the actual hardback is really beautiful. I would put money on the moment Lizzie gets home from work, her spotting this and putting it in her shelf. Let's put bets now, put it in the comments. Do you think this will last long on Waypoint's shelves or do you think it will go straight into Lizzie's basket? Cause I think it's gonna go straight into Lizzie's basket. I'm telling you now. Um, I ordered myself the sequels to the Prison Healer, which I have the hardback of because the paperback of this one is coming out very soon and they only had like 12 copies of this left. So I wanted to make sure I got that one. Obviously this one just came out. So I'm hoping that I really enjoy that series because I've now committed to having all the hardbacks. Um, so those ones are technically for me. They won't go on my own TBR until I've done another TBR Vets Challenge one, don't worry. And then the final one is one that I pre-ordered, which is A Taste of Gold. I don't know much about it, it just sounds really interesting. It's a court intrigue political high fantasy. And it's gorgeous, <laughs> like that's so pretty. So that's the first box. Now let's, where's my scissors? Let's open the second box, because the second box is bigger. Bigger and better. That's like better. I just love book buying. The problem with being a bookseller is that I can get my books in slightly cheaper for myself, which means I tend to bulk buy, um, whereas I used to just buy like one or two, I tend to now buy five or six as a minimum. I tend to spend about 40 quid a month on books, um, but that is with my discount, so. Okay, so. I had a couple of people mention that they wanted to get the Graham Catton book in, but that they didn't like the front cover of the new one. So I have stocked up on some hardbacks because I just I just know what's gonna happen. I know what's gonna happen. They're gonna see the paperback, they're gonna hate it, but the book is so good that I wanted to have some spare hardbacks. And worst case scenario, these will be going straight into the Gothoba giveaway. I actually picked this book last year for the Gothoba giveaway, but to be honest, it's so good, I'm almost tempted to give it away again because it just, <sighs> this is literally my favorite book of all time. Like it's so good. Not of all times, but top 10. Top 10 for sure. I got this another pre-order, which is the Skeleton Key. Again, I don't know anything about it. I just know that it's super spooky gothic vibes and that sometimes that's all it takes for it to come into my basket because then I will read it, decide if I like it, and then it will go onto Waypoint. But for now, I'm hyped for it. So it's on Waypoint. Um, and then we have Ithaca, which I haven't put on there yet, but it's another Greek retelling by a female author. And I'm starting to collect those. I hadn't noticed to begin with, um, but they are a thing at the moment. Greek retellings are like really coming into their own. So that is just another one. It's another one. Uh, this is one that I bought for Lizzie as a gift because she's just hosted her readathon. So she doesn't know, as of recording, she doesn't know 
that I've bought this for her. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on her Tolkien shelf and see if she notices. Um, or see, just in general, how long it takes her to notice, because she's going to be coming back from work um, later, like a good few hours later. Um, but I bought her the complete Tolkien companion. <laughs> and she is a chunker but she is beautiful um so this has loads of mythos about tolkien i don't expect lizzie to read this anytime soon um i just wanted to get her a little something to say well done on such a great readathon like lizzie worked really really hard on the middle earthathon and she you know she streamed so much that she nearly passed out like she did such a great job she read loads of books and i just thought i want to get her something to say congrats congrats and well done and apparently what I wanted to get her was the biggest fucking Tolkien book you've ever seen in your life. So, <laughs> congrats, Lizzie. You did really well. I'm really proud of you. I feel like a proper mama bear. You've done so good. You've done so good. Someone else ordered The Love Hypothesis. Wasn't mad about that. It's a great romance. Um, so that is there. Um, Lizzie asked me to get Before the Coffee Gets Cold because she needs it for the book Wanderers. Um, so one of the prompts is to read a book with a hot drink in the title. And that is coffee. Coffee is a hot drink. We've got the sequel to Clowns in a Cornfield. I don't know how I feel about that cover. <laughs> Look, that is absolutely terrifying. Um, but I'm hoping to get to this one for Gothtober um, if I don't sell this copy almost immediately. I was just looking to see if there's anything under the spine, under the cover. There isn't. Um, but I read the first one this year and absolutely loved it. So I'm really excited to get to this one. But they only had like three copies of my distributor. So I had to be really careful. I don't think they've got any stock left. Um, so if you do message me to order this, just know that you're snatching this directly from my hands. Another one you'd be snatching straight from my hands because I've only seen it in two other places is So Happy For You. Now I like a romance around a wedding, right? I used to work in the wedding industry. There is something about wedding romances that is just lovely and cute and it's a good time. This is a thriller set in a wedding and I'm, I'm even more here for that. <laughs> I'm even more here for that and I just don't own that many thrillers anymore and I keep picking thrillers and aiming for thrillers in my racing stacks and I don't have any books for it so now now I do now I do that one's another one that's probably just going straight in my basket as opposed to anyone else's this is another one that's going straight in my basket uh dark age which is fucking enormous like what is that i committed to the red rising series after i'd seen it a hundred times on becca from becca with books's channel and i just adore it i just adore it i love it more than i enjoyed game of thrones but it has a very very similar vibe to game of thrones and it's but this is enormous <laughs> i was like i'm gonna wait until next year because the sick book doesn't come out until next year so i'm gonna have to wait for it and now i'm like no no i need that time i need that time to read it jesus christ I need to stop buying myself massive books because that is obnoxious. Um, we have Vamps, which is a elite academy in the Swiss Alps, but with vampires. I just, okay, sign me up. Thank you. Um, another pre-order, we have Marriage Portrait, which is based on the same portrait that supposedly, oh, ooh, that's pretty. Those are pretty end pages. Um, and that's really nice to okay well this is going in my basket as well isn't it it's gonna go right next to my hamnet because it's by the same author i just um so this is based on the same portrait that is supposed to have inspired the story of um the portrait of a duchess or duchess of po duchess's portrait i used to teach the poem it's a really interesting poem about this duke who has quite clearly murdered his wife um and this is about this is based on the same portrait and i really really enjoyed hamnet i really enjoyed maggie o'farrell's feminist overtones of a clearly very prominent fiction like fictional historical person and i just really enjoyed that and i just think this is going to be fascinating but i'm also really intrigued by that front cover like it's just yeah jungle vibes someone ordered uh, blackwater's sister because they're right someone else ordered the unbroken because they're right those are great books i then got oh it hasn't got a spread edge that's so disappointing we've got amari and the great game which is the second in the amari series that hardback has just arrived um but there's no no spread edge there's no spread edge my first one has like a really nice blue glittery edge this one nothing it's, i mean it's still shiny on the front but and that just looks like the one ring, which I, I mean, if it, if it makes a reference to that, I'm not mad about it. And to be fair, it does have a very similar naked hardback to the other one. But no spread edge. Huh. Well, 
only mildly disappointing. And then I bought myself again, this is for me, um, another Pages & Co book because I have the first three and I saw that the fourth one is also in paperback. So I thought, why not? Why not? It's coming up to Christmas. It's only like the 3rd of September when recording this. It's coming up to Christmas. So, but if you haven't treated yourself to something from Waypoint, please do. Supports me and my content. Helps me pay rent. Helps me buy myself books. I'm gonna go do some work so I can get paid and then afford more books. So I once uh, forgot the word cold and said my mouth is the opposite of on fire, um, which is why I have this mug that says this. And I am drinking this from this mug because this mug is a reminder that I am stupid. <laughs> Um, and that is contextually relevant. <laughs> so. I have started two of the three books, um, and I will talk about this one in a sec, but I want to talk about this one, because this is the one that made me feel very stupid. Now, this is a literary feminist fiction by Faye Weldon, who was a lecturer of mine, incredible woman, incredible writer, and I started reading this book and was like, oh my god, am I an idiot? Because this book is um, complicated. And there is stuff going on that I just don't understand and they're using language that I just don't understand and they're making references that I just don't understand. And am I a bad feminist or is this a bad feminist novel? I have all these questions and then I found out it was a sequel. And then I found out it was a sequel and there's loads of stuff that has been set up as law in this world based on the first book, which I haven't read. So... I'm stupid. I'm just not the kind of stupid that I thought I was. I'm a different kind of stupid. But overall I am enjoying it. It reminds me very much of The Power, which is another feminist novel which pits men and women up against each other in quite a visceral way. So in this novel, in the first novel, um, basically this woman spends her entire life living as a traditional housewife and then eventually she finds her husband having an affair and decides that the status quo needs to be disrupted and she burns her house down she burns her whole world down and she basically makes it so that women are superior and men are inferior they are subordinate to women um, etc and she gets this reputation of being the she-devil uh, which is yeah which is where the title death of a she-devil co comes from um, so we then skip forward 30 years after all this has happened, and that's why I was very confused. So we skip 30 years after this has happened, and she is 84, she is struggling, she's murdered someone, and she is dealing with, like, the guilt of that, and she is just generally trying to deal with the fact that her feminism isn't the same type of feminism as a modern, there's a new wave of feminism coming where they don't see men as the enemy which she just doesn't she cannot fathom that that's the case because she has spent so long fighting not to be a subordinate housewife um and it's very insightful and it's very interesting because especially as like a modern feminist as i claim to be or certainly a radical feminist that i claim to be um it's one of those things where feminism has to change it has to adapt all the time and if you're not prepared for feminism to adapt um you do get left behind and you feel like your morals are being questioned by those who haven't those who have moved on those who have adapted and i can see that when i talk to women older than me and i talk to them about stuff that younger women than me or younger non-binary people than me or even some men younger than me talk about their way for feminism and what it means for them versus what it means for people older than us. And as a millennial, it's really weird because you do get caught in this like middle ground of like, yeah, the women before us have been fighting for years for equality. And unfortunately, the women younger than me are still going to be fighting because radical right wing people, misogynists, sexists, etc., will always find a way to demonise lefts and liberals, which is, it's, it's a harsh truth and it sucks. <laughs> um, and that's kind of the thing that we have to fight against. Um, and I was watching a really interesting video yesterday by Lena Norms talking about sloganism and how slogans really boil down key messaging into stuff that's fairly relevant. Um, 
and that was really interesting so it's all kind of like tying in together and i'm having a very thoughtful day um but yeah overall i'm, en I'm enjoying the writing but it it killed me because the one piece of advice that i remember faye giving me like over, not necessarily just me but like in our class over and over again was would a nomad at the top of a mountain know what's going on without any other context of what's going around in the world would they understand what's happening no faith <laughs> didn't have a clue didn't have a clue because i didn't read the first book maybe if i read the first book there'd be more preamble i do like the fact that like a lot of sequels will do this where they really go arse over fist to kind of over explain the first book to you Faye's not doing that. Faye's assuming that you've read the first book or that you are smart enough that you'll work out what happened, which eventually I was. It took me a while, but I got there. I did get there eventually, but I am enjoying it. Um, and I'm able to do it on an audiobook, so I'll probably get that finished either today or tomorrow. Um, as for Flowers in the Attic, this is harder to read the second time because the first time you kind of follow along with Kathy and she's confused by certain things and she is like just generally like doing her best to try and work stuff out and like support her mother whereas because i know where she's going and i know what's going to happen to her not just from the blurb but having witnessed the decline in mental health it's really sad it's really sad so there's moments where like her and her brother don't really see eye to eye on stuff and it's like well that relationship is about to change um which is like gross um and like he won't even compliment her because he's just like now nah, you're my sister it's, it would be weird um and it's like oh I, okay you really you really lent into the foreshadowing well not foreshadowing but like i guess it hmm, is it foreshadowing the english teacher in me is not sure but um it, yeah it's really sad and seeing the mother who is frantically trying to like build this life back up but is so obsessed with money and the fact that she doesn't have any skills so can't work um, and very much relied on her husband um, is really sad all of this is really sad and they've only just arrived at the big house where they're going to be locked in the attic and they've not even been locked in the attic yet and I'm still like this is really sad it's really sad <laughs> um, and I remember being really creeped out by it the first time I read it and now I'm just it's not creepy on a second read it's definitely sad um, and I have a feeling that she, the death of the She-Devils might have a sad ending as well. I feel like the main character might die. Um, at least I know that no one dies in this. But I feel like there are moments when... Or at least I don't remember. I don't remember if one of them dies. But I feel like something super sad... Like, I know... Because I've read it before. And it is kind of, like, falling back into place. The more I read it, the more those puzzle pieces are, like, falling back into place for me. Um, but, yeah. Tough reading so far this week. Really, really tough reading which um i've not even picked up chocolate yet and i we i did say at the beginning that this is the one that i was the least likely to want to pick up um but i do feel like i should at least read the first three chapters so i can give you a general idea of what it is um and what my thoughts on it are um but i think both of these will probably come out as a four star and then i will probably dnf this one if i start it which is not like that's not the mentality to have when you start a book is to be like I'm not even going to finish it, but I'm going to pick it up anyway. But I just kind of want to try, um, because I'm trying books that my mum recommends me. So, um, yeah, I've got quite a busy day today. Um, main, it's mainly work, mainly work. But I filmed, edited and scheduled my Gothtober announcement yesterday. So that is up and it's set up as a premiere. I'm meant to be going away this weekend and I'm meant to be going away on Friday. So I probably won't be in the house as the premiere goes up. And I'm so nervous about it because I know there's a few people that get really, really excited for Gothtober, but they keep telling me that it's, it's going to be bigger and better. And I'm just like, but what if it isn't? And I'm just, I'm really nervous about it. And I'm pretty sure I said this yesterday as well, because I still feel really nervous about it. And I will feel nervous right up until Halloween. That's that's how I work, and it really tickles me that Olivia was like, "No, you were this stressed last year," because I don't remember being this stressed last year, but I'm sure I'll be twice as stressed next year as well. So, anyway, um, gonna go crack on with some work, get some more reading done, and I'll catch up with you later. I'll read something else. Okay, it's Friday. I didn't record anything yesterday. Apparently, Thursdays are just not a day I record things vlog-wise because this is like the third one now. Um, but Gothtober goes live in ten minutes. And I am pooping my pants. Um, 
so far there are two people waiting and I'm one of them and I'm just really worried that no one's gonna like it or no one's gonna care and I'm just I'm very very nervous I'm very nervous and I just thought I should probably catch that beforehand it's pouring down with rain which should soothe me but hasn't and I've had a cho hot chocolate in a previous Gothtober mug and that hasn't soothed me either Lizzie has just posted that she's excited on the thing though there's now four people waiting oh my god I feel sick <laughs> Like I've, I've been playing sims to try and calm myself down i've i've been stress cleaning hope that didn't make you feel real seasick um i've been stress cleaning which means that my floor is empty and my bed has loads of crap on it because you know needed to sort that out for absolutely no reason whatsoever more people are commenting more commenting so we've got my faves my faves coming in and then like i said glorious rain on the outside what if it's shit? Like genuinely though, because you put loads of work into something and then what if it's shit? And what if people are just being really nice because they like me? There's now five people waiting. What if it's shit? It could be shit. It could be really shit. It's a really cringe video as well. It's a really cringe video as well. I don't like feeling nervous. I feel physically sick. <laughs> I feel physically sick. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stop recording myself now because this is getting a bit pick me about it but yeah feel sick hopefully it goes well i'm sure i'm sure it'll be fine that was convincing wasn't it <laughs> good morning it's sunday and um, i'm gonna be watching becca sprints today and because it's the book Hopley thing what happens is if she rolls a double you have to swap books so i was trying to work my way through flowers in the attic because i have started it i'm about 80 pages in now it's so goddamn depressing <laughs> um and i am enjoying it but it is like it's a slog um so i might swap over to the audiobook for that one later but we rolled a double i say we rolled a double. becca rolled a double and I've had to swap for chocolat. I'm now about 30 pages into this and I kind of want to give you my first impression of it because I'm about six chapters in now and I'm really enjoying it. Like considering this was the one that I was most nervous about, the writing is incredibly decadent, it's incredibly slow, it's very beautiful but it's the vibe for me. Now I grew up watching things like Gilmore Girls and The Good Witch which had a very soft very gentle nothing bad really happens type vibe as well as like dark thrillers and stuff like that so i had like kind of like the two worlds and considering how like dark and depressing the flowers in the attic is this is like very much the good witch you have this main character called vianne who arrives at this really cute countryside place in france everyone knows everyone everyone knows everyone's business and she is opening a chocolate shop and she has already started like befriending people she's already started getting to know people it's getting to the point where she's like no you should buy this chocolate because i know it'll be your favorite and she's right and it it has such good witch vibes and like if you've seen good witch you'll know that she kind of just gets on with everybody the, the stakes are quite low it's a very gentle like tv show this book feels like that i've never read a book that feels more like the good witch than this does like this is just gentle and there will be stakes there will be kind of stuff going on because we've met the priest or the vicar now who's the curate who is very anti this and is very anti the people of the village and he kind of sees them as children and very much sees himself as like morally superior to them and he's like she won't last it's not gonna last blah 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 and she just has this real like spiritual witchy vibe and that is insane to me because this is the one that I've been putting off because I just didn't think I'd like it. I'm actually really enjoying it, um, which is really annoying. <laughs> it's really annoying when I get that wrong, where I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna like it, and then I do. Like, I, I wish I hadn't been quite so negative about it, but maybe it's that negativity that's actually allowed me to enjoy it. 
for what it is. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go continue reading this. I just wanted to tell you that if you like The Good Witch, you should read Chocolat because it's got immaculate, immaculate Good Witch vibes at the moment. Like she, she moves into this place and she starts like burning incense and she's got candles and she goes around with her daughter because it's just her and her daughter and people are speculating whether she's a widow, whether she never married and like all this other stuff's going on and it's just the intrigue. It's, oh, I'm just, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying it. I should stop being such a negative Nancy. It's really good. <laughs> Okay, so it's last thing on a Sunday. I spent most of this afternoon editing my video and I realised there's like a whole bunch of stuff that I was like talking about intermittently and then like never really got back to. So obviously Gothtober's gone up now. It went fine. <laughs> like it went fine. I was being very dramatic, um, but everyone seemed to really like it. So that's all a good thing. And I managed to finish Death of a She-Devil, which I gave four stars. Um, it was not what I expected at all. It was very high feminist literary um, very similar to The Power by Naomi Oldman, so if you enjoy that kind of writing style I would recommend it, but if not, I don't know if it's the sort of thing that I would usually recommend to my general audience. Um, I started reading Chocolat, obviously as I mentioned earlier today, didn't finish it because I ended up getting distracted, um, but I'm probably going to continue this one on anyway, and I I think, actually I'm just going to update where I am because okay, I'm now on page 265, which means I've got 140 pages to go, and it has gotten real brutal. So throughout the entire story, obviously these kids are locked up in the attic and they're starting to develop and they're starting to become adults. Um, they're turning between like 13 and 14. So like their bodies are starting to change and their grandmother is treating them abominably. Now, because I've read it before, I know what she's doing and they haven't realized yet. Like she's done some stuff to them already that they're like, oh my God, this is awful. Um, but I'm finding it really, really hard to read um, because it's neglect, it's, it's childhood neglect and it's incredibly gothic, um, but it is incredibly dark and incredibly sad and the trigger warnings are a mile long. Um, but I tell you what, it holds up. It's still a fantastic novel. It's beautifully crafted and it's going to make me cry. It's going to make me cry because I have remembered what happens and I'm just it's brutal so i will probably finish that one um sometime this week and i will probably finish chocolate as well but i'm going to end this vlog here because i am doing way with a thon um next week so i'm going to be reading books specifically for that which are <laughs> less depressing um but to be fair if this was a test of whether i can trust my mum for recommendations yes i can I don't know if I will necessarily trust her not to traumatise me, um, but I do feel like I can trust her to give me a decent gothic recommendation um, and certainly some very decadent writing in there, which is good. It's, an, it's a nice thing to know. Um, but if you want to just let me know that you were here and that you enjoyed this vlog, feel free to leave a chocolate bar or some kind of egg shape in the comments down below. That'd be really cool to see. Um, and if you want to treat yourself to something from Waypoint, do because it supports me and my content. Other than that, have a nice day.